Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the Market Update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money in crypto, or you need to make sense of a down move, then subscribe to this channel. Turn on the alerts bell so you know when we're going live. And of course, if you like the content and you find it helpful, give us a thumbs up. All right. Let's see who's on the stream here. Fernando, LFG, Flipped Burger. Thank you for the love. Mateo, okay. Houdini, go time, right? <clears throat> okay, last name, Pola. I appreciate that. Justin, what's going on? We have Koreatown, Oxford, right? <clears throat> we have people coming in from all over. Munich, Germany today. Ted D says, well, games, no supply, right? right? Ohio, Chicago, Diamond Stanley, welcome to the show. All right, today, we're going to go through the big question. Is the crash over or not? Okay. Is it over, right? And if it's not over, what should you do? Now, here's a public service announcement, right? Oh, we have Paris here, welcome, along with the UK. Okay. Now, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. <clears throat> I know that's, that's somewhat shocking, but uh, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. So what I tell you now, okay, I've already thought about this. I'm going to give you levels and rationales, okay, okay, for what to do because someone's freaking out that they bought the top. I get that. That's, I understand that. Now, when it comes to buying the top, one of the best creatures in crypto are like what they call the later stage bulls, right? So if you got in at the top and this thing turned because of the Fed, then I'm going to give you the levels so that you can make decisions, okay? So you can make decisions, all right? So we have Thailand in the house, right? And I appreciate all the love out there. So let's get to it. Let's kick into your market update. All right, we're calling this the Bitcoin Miami crash. All right, you know, buy, buy the rumor, sell the conference. Second year in a row, this has happened. Okay, someone's asking if we short Luna. Okay, we'll look at that in the Q&A section. Okay, Bitcoin crypto crash, is it over? And how can you manage risk? That's really what this is about. It's about you managing risk. Now, let's talk about why yesterday was a train wreck. Was it a train wreck because the Fed talked about raising interest rates a lot? No. The bond market has already raised interest rates a lot, okay? To the point where it's affecting home building and it's hurting consumers' ability to refinance their house and get extra cash. Now, the reason everybody got hysterical yesterday is because the Fed in that top line, right, has much as $95 billion in asset runoff. That means that they're going to reduce the amount of money they print potentially by up to $95 billion a month. Why is that number significant? Well, back 10 years ago when I was in equities, the Fed chairman started pumping $85 billion a month into the market. And that's what caused the moonshot in equities. Okay, that's what got it started and that's what kept it going despite problems in 2010 and 2011. Now, notice it says as much as. So that means they could do 5 billion, that means they could do 95 billion. Now, that inflation number coming up on the 12th is probably going to be the worst inflation number in the history of the inflation number. 
So we have to figure out, given this new development, right? Because before everybody was assuming, ah, eh, you know, the Fed will, uh, you know, they'll do, they'll do a little or they won't do it at all. Stop printing money, that is. Okay, this is way more serious. So how are we going to do this? Well, I'll give you the big picture. I I'll give you the cliff notes early. I want you to keep watching, but here are the cliff notes, right? <clears throat> I think you got to be short equities. If you're going to be long crypto, you got to be short stocks, right? Because I think in stocks, you could wake up one day and just have that whole thing give out, right? Especially since rates are high and I've talked about, you know, crypto being too low and equity is going to be too high. That has to rectify itself. Okay. So, you know, long, the biggest cryptos, short equities, that's one strategy. And the other strategy is to just say, all right, I'm trading. I did a good trade or a bad trade. I'm going to give you the levels to help you decide. Don't go anywhere. That's coming up. Now let's talk about interest rates. The blue line is what the bond market thinks they should be getting in terms of interest to compensate for inflation. It's a theoretical number called a break even. The orange line is the actual yield on the five-year note. So Fed funds are basically at zero and the yield on the five-year note is at 3.35%. That's actually higher than it is on the 10-year government bond. That's how freaked out people are about Fed rate hikes. Now, one thing that's interesting about this chart is that the actual interest rate has caught up with the theoretical interest rate. So that could mean one of two things. That inflation hysteria has peaked, Fed fear has peaked, or, or equities are going to get wrecked and people are going to buy bonds as a safe haven, okay? Because bonds are kind of fairly valued to inflation, which is it for crypto. Now, the five-year government bond is like three-something, but the 10-year government bond hasn't gone to three-something yet. I've been trying to find the top in the 10 year, right? And gotten wrecked. So just a graph here to show how far the 10 year note yield has to go between 2.6 and 325, 3.25%. So if the 10 year note yield catches up with the five year yield, that's the end of stocks. And the only way to hold crypto is to be short stocks against it. So legacy bonds have gotten to the point where they're going to affect stocks that's the bottom line now let's look at stocks 4443 in es1 s p futures is a key tactical level if futures are above that you don't necessarily have to freak out if you're a short-term trader now if you're a longer term mind this is the S&P 500 ETF SPY on a weekly chart, okay? This thing looks as toppy now as it did bottom-ish back when the pandemic started around July, okay? That's when the Fed really started pumping money in. So it looks like the opposite, right? It just looks like equities are just so just stupid. Now, it sucks that crypto has to get punished, you know, because the Fed's going on the war path and that could really affect equities. But the most famous trader ever, and you can Google him, he was featured on Zero Hedge, Stan Druckenmiller. I mean, the guy never had a, a losing quarter in his whole life. And his main thesis was don't fight the Fed. So if the Fed is going to pull money out of the system, then you know, I had all these levels and I had this strategy and I was like, buy the dip in crypto. And that still may be okay, but you got to keep in mind, you can't mess around. If that inflation number comes out and the Fed goes on to war path, then, you know, equities and probably everything else are going to get wrecked. What's the crypto plan? Don't go anywhere. I'm getting there. Now, this is Bitcoin. This is, comes from our quant department. You've seen our DeMarc work right? That comes from a software program. This is our quant department. It's not their version of DeMarc work, but it's quant and machine learning AI, okay? Div support and resistance. So 
here it is. Here's the simple part. Bitcoin above 44K, good. Bitcoin below 41,600, not good. Okay, not good, as in get out. Okay, so above 44, it's okay, right? I prefer to hold the bigger cryptos, all right? And if I have to, I'll be short equities. But it's got to be above 44K. Now, we had 44K yesterday, right? That was on our Bitcoin 240-minute chart, four-hour chart. We also had 43,500. Now, currently, Bitcoin is being kind of a pain in that it's hanging out just below that point. I think if you want to stay confident, bullish and confident, it's got to be above 44K, all right? And if it's below 41,600, then you have to start stopping out, right? You don't want to get wrecked if there's a big problem next week. You want to be long, you want to buy the dip, but I'm giving you levels where you would exit. Now, Solana, my personal pain trade. So our AI caught it, we wrote it up, okay? I said 136, it's got to get above 136, and that's right where it failed. But I understand a lot of people probably got in late because it was hard to believe that Solana was rallying given how bad it had traded. So 136 is resistance. Now, for levels, I had 117. Our automated system has 119. So Solana above 119, good. Good, right? Solana below 119, you have to ask yourself if you want to take a loss, a deeper loss, if it goes down. That's all. It's that simple. So above 136, trend continuation. Below 119, I had 117 yesterday. Okay, so you can also use that. But do yourself a favor, right? If you did a bad trade, right? Like Solana, getting super bullish Solana was right. Talking about how Solana could go higher when it was at 120 probably led people to jump in. So if you jumped in above 120 and it's below 117, then I suggest you manage your risk accordingly. You would not want to get wrecked and have Solana at 97. You, you, would, you don't want that, okay? So stick with buy the dip, stick with support, and if it doesn't work, out. Now, let's talk about ETH. Big decision, okay? Kind of like ETH, even though it got rejected at like 3,400-ish, all right? 3,180 is support in ETH. If that holds, then like ETH and altcoins can hold. Right. I'm like praying that it does. Now, 3,100 is another level. So let's look at the four hour chart. You got the nine bottom, which we talked about. Then ETH rallies. Now, is this a nine? The, the nine signifies the first part of a trend or the end of a range. Okay. So down. And what you don't want to see is a, a rally that fails because that's how the DeMarc theory works. The one through nine is the first part of the trend, then the bounce. Now that's either the end of the down move or the start of a bigger one if the rally fails. It'll go from one to 13, counting a certain set of conditions. So short trend, end of range. That's choice one. Short trend bounce, bigger trend, that's choice two. Which is it? We don't know yet, right? But if it holds 3,180, good. If it holds 3,100, pretty good. Below 3,100, out. Like on a daily closing basis. Here's why. So this is the eight-hour chart of ETH. You know, the market update three days ago probably could have just been a tweet where I just showed this and said, ETH has made a big new high and the new high hasn't been confirmed by stochastics or by the RSI indicator. So ETH up, momentum indicator, lower highs. Usually a recipe for a correction figured to be 2-3%, not 9%. So ETH gets smashed. Sometimes with these charts, you've got this expanding range formation. So... 
Whichever way you break out of one of those things can be very telling and very powerful. So that's why I'm like, all right, 3,100, you know, let's not sell support. That's never worked. Okay. But if that doesn't work, exit, exit. Okay. Because I don't want you to get killed if there's another wave down like this. Okay. On the 240, the four hour chart of ETH again, we talked about the ABC correction. We also talked about what a pain in the ass it is to find the end of C. All right. 3,100 is a good level and a good idea. 3,180 is another idea. Okay. But we want to see the market go, okay, we're done with this now. The bulls take charge. We don't want this dead cat bounce action that we've got when this is being recorded midday at April 7th. Okay. Now, on the 90-minute chart, which is only going to be good for like today, you've got a 13 and a 9 bottom on Ethereum. So that should produce some up move in Ethereum. You should see like, say, 3,400. But if there is no up move in Ethereum over the next two days, you have to manage risk. If there is an up move, then we call it the bottom end of the range, and then we can just ride it and hope the inflation number and equities are not a disaster, okay? Equities were down with crypto up as, as I was recording this. So I'm more than a little worried about equities. I wish I didn't have to be, okay? Now with crypto, again, you want to buy at the bottom of the range or you want to buy the dip, do it, okay? But you know where the stop is now, 3180 or 3100. Now let's look at Cardano. Cardano, I talked about $1.25. Our, our quant guys have $1.29 with support at, you know, basically a dollar. So that looks like the range for Cardano unless the market falls apart. Okay, Avalanche. Oh, the pain of this. I thought this was teacup and handle on a short-term chart. Now I even talked about the handle being painful, and it still may be. The problem is our guys came up with work that said, you know, resistance was at 100, which uh, 99, 100, that makes sense, but they're not seeing much support below that until 64. I'm like, oh my God, right? So I'm not going to tell you to put a stop at 64 because by then it's too late. But in Avalanche, I'm guessing 80. I mean, we'll look at it in the request part. But risk management in Avalanche is probably just as important as risk management in Solana, right? If you bought it at 90 and you have to puke it out at 80, even though that sucks, right? At least you'll be managing risk. Now, if you want to stay long it because you believe in it, do it, right? I mean, that it's about your risk tolerance and maybe look to be short equities, not investment advice to protect yourself, okay? Now, near 1573, I would call this a key pivot level. I am not giving up on near as a possible one coin market, assuming this doesn't blow up. $17 was resistance. We talked about that. It went right to that level, right? I was looking for 20. I'm still looking for 20. Maybe I'm being a pig, but I think if you haven't done anything in near, you would wait until it gets back above. 1573 before you tried it. Now, everyone's going to ask about Phantom. Okay. So, someone's asking, where can I enter near? Right. You can enter near above 1573. Make it prove itself. I'll try to look at downside levels. I did TA on Solana. 119 to 117 is the support zone. If that holds, great. If not, and you bought it much higher, Manage your risk. If you did a bad trade, that's, you know, you've got something in common with everybody who's ever traded. Okay. So I think Solana can go higher. I think ETH can go a lot higher, but not if the Fed is pulling out $80 billion because they're upset about inflation. So we have to be reasonable and we can't fight the Fed. Now, Phantom, a lot of people asking about this. Really nice rally off a dollar and change, like a dollar fifteen. 
So it went below support and then it went above resistance at $1.49. Now it looks like it could go back to 115. So of all the big coins, you know, Avalanche has got a lot of downside risk, unfortunately, and so does Phantom. Near and some of those other coins like ETH look a little bit better. Now let's go to Rune, okay? Rune. <clears throat> so it's outperformed on the way up. And if you're, if you're liking this, even if you're not liking the market, please hit the like button. That helps us get the word out, okay? Uh, if you get resistance in Rune at $9.80, then profit takers are in charge. You trapped people above 10. Now, if Rune turns around and gets above $9.80 at some point over the next three days, that could be constructive, right? It's paid to buy the scary dips in Rune, but it, you know, and it may pay if you're long it and you're hodling it to take a shot at that. You'd sleep better at night if it was above 980. All right. Let's see what's on this. Let's see who's in the chat here. What's happening. Okay. So I see CKB in here. Okay. All right. I see Polly. All right. I did soul already, but we can do it again. Okay. Looks like there's a lot of pain on Solana. Okay, somebody's saying, oh, San Paulo, Brazil is in the house. Somebody's saying, why buy Bitcoin when I can buy a much smaller coin? Okay, welcoming Ireland, Oregon, New Orleans, and Tenderfire. Welcome. Okay. Why should I buy Bitcoin when I can buy a small altcoin and make a lot more money? Okay. That's a good question. So if the Fed is on the warpath, right? You do not want to be long small coins. Matter of fact, is if you get a decent rally, right? Like, and I define small coins as anything outside the top 20. If the Fed goes on the war path, okay, then you have to be reasonable. You just have to be, right? You have to say to yourself, okay, am I long a super speculative asset? And am I making money or am I not making money? Now, it's okay. It's okay to take a shot. I'm not saying don't take a shot, right? I've been saying buy dips for a couple of days, but obviously people are upset. And when I saw this thing about the Fed, I was like, uh oh. So you better know where your risk management levels are. Okay, Solano. So here's where we're at. Okay, there's a DeMarc nine bottom on the four hour chart. Okay, so for the moment, that is constructive. Okay. Now let's go to look at the 90 minute chart. Hey, Bill, you're not sharing. I'm not sharing the screen. All right. Got it. All right. So I'm going to write down these coins. Okay. So let's go back and start over with Solana. Okay. Solana on the 90 minute chart. So very short term. Okay. You have your A, B, C correction. Okay. You have a possible bounce signal, a warning of volatility. So hopefully Solana recovers. Okay. Let's go to the four hour chart. Okay. Now Solana has a lot of work to do. I had 117 and there's that 119 level. So our DeMarc work and our quant guys had the same level. So really, if you want to sleep at night in Solana, right, it's got to get above like 120. Now, if you can't take it, the best investment strategy is the one that lets you sleep at night. One possible suggestion is to reduce your position by half. Okay, you can reduce your position. Now, if Solana goes back above 136, well, it's, it's going to go to the moon. You can jump back in. But the worst thing you can do is get your head all messed up. Is to get your head all messed up. Okay? Welcoming New Jersey. Okay? What's a good stop for Solana? Okay? 
Well, I think a stop for Solana is a close, okay, below 117. So if this thing cannot rally today, okay, I would seriously consider stopping out. Let's go to a 30-minute chart to see if I can get like a more exact level. So if you want to be, if you want to, if you want to kind of be risky, the absolute no mass level could be 108. But personally, if it wasn't above 117, I say to close a business today or tomorrow, that's where my stop would be. I want to see this thing come back and I want to see it come back now. Okay. Okay. Now we're looking at theta. All right, so we're going to the four hour chart. And someone's asking for more detail on Solana. I'll go back to that. So there's a nine bottom in theta on the four hour chart, a good, decent, you know, warning signal. You had one up here at the top. So this may be one at the bottom. So theta is interesting, is interesting. It is. There's a nine bottom here. And if that holds, it's good. Now let's go back to Solana. Somebody was asking about where the nine bottom is. Okay, so on a four hour Solana chart, there's the nine bottom, okay? And that level is holding for the moment. So what are we doing in Solana? Is it going back above the 117, 119 key area? Maybe, okay, maybe. So if you want to take the risk, take the risk. If you can't take it, adjust your position. Adjust your position. Okay, so let's look at poly. By the way, altcoin overtime is coming up. So if you like altcoin overtime, it's coming up. So in poly, again, good bottoming signal, okay? DeMarc support at 42 cents, 0 0.4272. So if that holds, it's good, right? All these things, they're going to be somewhat similar, right? You want to ask yourself, can I take the risk in small altcoins if this happens again? If you're okay with that, particularly in something where there's some support, you can carry on. Now, somebody was asking about near earlier, where the near entry level is. So let's go to the four hour chart of near. Okay. I, I still think you would want to buy near if it was going higher rather than trying to catch the falling knife, but let's see what we can get here. Okay. So 1473 is a prior high. So the ceiling at 1473 is now the floor. So if you don't want to wait until it goes back up and you want to buy it near support, 1473 is a level to lean on in near. Okay. Now on the 90 minute chart of near, good news. So you had the 13 bottom, everyone pukes it out, right? 1374 below that is your stop. Right. And it looks like it's coming back. So you want to see these altcoins, these big ones, you want to see them bounce and come back. That's ETH, NEAR, SOL, Bitcoin, right? Avalanche. We're going to like say a prayer that it doesn't fall apart. Okay. Because Avalanche and Phantom are the ones that don't look as good. As a matter of fact, there's a, there's a guy on Twitter that thinks NEAR can flip Avalanche in market cap. So, you know, that, that's how I would adjust it. That, I mean, that's just how I would do it. Like Bitcoin, ETH, and NEAR look pretty good, right? Avalanche and Solana have more work to do, right? And Phantom and Cardano are kind of in the middle of ranges. Is there any hope of survival for eight? So we do eight pretty much every day and 
We can't figure it out, right? We can't figure it out. Um, the best I can tell you in Ape is that on a short-term chart, the, the spike down to the low at 1050 could have been the low. Okay, and there's also a ton of support at 1050 because you've got both a 13 and a nine bottom on the four hour chart. So if Ape was ever going to go up and you want to take the risk, now would be the time to do it on support. If these signals appear and Ape can't go up, I don't know when Ape is ever going to go up, right? I, I'm not being negative. I'm saying, hey, if you like Ape, this is the place to try it. And if it doesn't work, manage risk. Okay, what does the dollar index look like? Good question. So so the dollar index on a four hour chart is still green. It's still green right here. Right. So the dollar index could still go to 100, probably because there's a problem with the euro. So the dollar scares me. Now, the other thing that scares me while we're on the subject of, of like foreign exchange is, you know how I'm always talking about a new monetary order? Well, you have a new monetary order because there's a problem with the ruble, right? <laughs> well, wrong. <laughs> I mean, the ruble, and I can't believe it's going to stay up here. I got to be honest with you, but the ruble went all the way down and then came all the way back. So I'm looking for this new world and Mr. Market went back to the old one. This is probably one of the reasons why crypto didn't do well. Because all of a sudden, everyone's like, well, there's no new world. We're back to the old one. Plus the dollar index is going up. So dollar interest rates fed, not favoring crypto. Now crypto looks like it's bottomed in many respects. And we just have to figure out what's what. Most likely, like I said, you want to buy a dip and make money. So you can buy a dip, but if you just sit there and you don't make money, then you have to make a decision, right? It's only a bull market. You can buy a dip and make money, right? It's the make money part that we have to see what happens. Okay, Algorand. Okay, so you have a nine bottom. That's okay on the four hour chart. All right. We have to decide or Algorand has to decide if anybody wants to come in above 80 cents and buy it because that was support. So this little pink area could be a good sign, right? If it gets above 80 cents, it's okay. If you were long it and you put up with this drop, well, I don't know. You're in the same place you were over here, right? You know, it wasn't 80 cents and then it went up and then it went back to 80 cents. So if you were long this, I don't know, you can stay long it. But as I've been saying on the stream, Unfortunately, venture capitalists are selling it at a dollar. Okay. So Filecoin. Okay, so this is somewhat, this is interesting. So a prior high in Filecoin was $22.30. And now Filecoin is making a decision as to whether or not it wants to stay above that. So is this breakout and then A, B, C come back and then go up, right? So it's wait and see. Now, if I was holding Filecoin, would I bail? Not investment advice? No. 
Now, if I bought Filecoin as a trade at 27 and I ran into a 13 top, right, and it's just a bad trade, then I would adjust my position. So there's a difference in this market between people are hodling because if you've been suffering, right, you can put in a stop or just, you know, wait and see what happens at these critical levels. But if you did a bad trade, clear your head. Okay. Okay. Zillica. Unfortunately, a classic case of if you get a monster moonshot, you got to take some of the money. Now, with Zillica, okay, this is pretty much unchanged from yesterday. So it goes way up and then it goes and it makes a 13 bottom. So here's your classic textbook DeMarc, right? One through nine, okay? Then down. Then there's a counter trend move up. That's the green candle in this one. So one through nine, set, that's called setup. Counter trend move. And then one through 13 on the downside to end the trend. So it would be a good idea if Zillica was above 11 cents. That's where, you know, below that is where stop should be. Now, if Zillica is done going lower and it's going to make a base, okay. So if you've been long Zillica forever and didn't take the money, maybe you can hold on, right? If you bought Zillica at 20 and it's a bad trade, then you might want to adjust risk. You definitely want to adjust risk no matter what type of trade you are, if it's below 11 cents, okay? We're looking for something more. We can tolerate a day for the market to calm down, but you're going to want to see Bitcoin and Ethereum recover. If you get that, these smaller coins can do okay because these smaller coins are near support points, okay? But they're going to need a little help from their friends. That's Bitcoin and Ethereum. And what happens to those coins may be dependent on equities, right? Because of what the Fed said. Because of what the Fed said, Flip Burger wants a little Zen action. No problem. Intellectual honesty is no fun. You're right. It's not. It's not. Because I know people want to hear this is going to go to the moon, that this was a great dip to buy, and it still may be. But you, ha you can't fight the Fed. You can't, right? These guys are on the war path. That's it. No matter what I got on my charts. Okay. Ethereum Classic. So this is a 240-minute chart. You get yourself a nine bottom. It goes up. That's great. But... You know, there was a ceiling or a floor around $43, $42.80, and it's stalling there. So when you got this highly speculative stuff, right? All right, you want to see these things take out support, okay? Otherwise, everybody who was buying this much lower and is like, oh, look, a rally from 38 to 42, I'm going to get out. So, you know... You don't have to panic, but you, you do need to understand that as of midday on Thursday, bears appear to be in control of this. Okay, Ethereum Classic. Now, what are the thoughts on Aave? Okay, so this all looks the same. You have the nine bottom here. That's on the four hour chart. But if you're looking at this on Sunday, okay, that might not be as relevant. Now, what is relevant is that Ave is retesting, right, a prior high at 192. So even if this is a bear market in Ave, this could be A, B, C. C could be up here or at least above the old high. So, you know, these things vary, right? There's a lot of variability. If Ave can actually keep it together above Wine 92, it, it could be good, right? It could be good. All right. Somebody's asked is out there. I appreciate you imploring people to hit the like button. Thank you. Okay. I think we got we got the 700 yesterday. 
which is, that's nice. I appreciate that. I, I know everybody prods their community for likes. So I know you hear that stuff all the time, but we do appreciate it. We want to get to a thousand. Okay. And then after this, I'm going to go to altcoin overtime. Okay. Now Binance coin. Okay. So big move up. Okay. Nine bottom correction. Now the question is, are people going to come back in and buy Binance coin? The old floor was somewhere between 432 and 430, 433. So if Binance coin is, is, is moving back above 433. I think that's constructive. Again, when it comes to these coins, when it comes to crypto, bigger is better. Bigger is better. Because if bigger isn't better, the whole thing's going to get blown out. Let's hope that's not the case. Let's hope the buy the dip strategy works. I gave you the stop levels. If you missed the stop levels, 41,600 in Bitcoin, 44,000 is that you know level above the market where it would be good. 31,800, I'm sorry, right. Uh, 3,180 in ETH or 3,100. That, that zone has got a hold. If it doesn't, you need to make different decisions. 117 to 119 for anybody joining late in Solana is the key level. If you did a bad trade, you did a bad trade, adjust your risk. If you want to hodl and give it a couple days, okay. Okay. You know, if you bought it at 70, and you don't mind writing it, take a shot. Okay. But, you know, like I said, I know there's a lot of people who maybe got in late and that's okay. Cause you were hopeful. You wanted it to go up. You wanted to make money. There's nothing wrong in my mind. There's nothing wrong with buying the top. Okay. It's painful. It's embarrassing. I've done it. I know, but you were hopeful. You had a positive attitude about crypto. I just want you to be able to continue in crypto. If it doesn't work out now, cake again, there was a prior floor at 883 and it's got to get back above that. There's a nine bottom, but we don't know if that's going to turn around and lead to a rally or if it's going to fail. We don't know yet. We just know that over the weekend, 883 is a key level. Okay. Somebody asking for polymath again, and someone's also asking for OCT. So let's get OCT up here. Okay, that's Octopus Network. Okay, I'm going to go with Octophy. Let's hope that that's right. Okay, so with this, okay, it looks like the important support point is at 365. In Octofy, that's the symbol that pulled up on CoinTrader. Okay, not Octofy. Okay, let's go back and check it out. Okay, Octopus Network, I'm just going to do it off coin market cap. Okay, so to me, right, the key level is 223. And here's why, right? You went up, you came back, you fell below 223. But once you came back above it, you skyrocketed. Now it comes back down, right? And it's literally sitting on like, actually the level is 222. So 
all of these smaller altcoins are going to give you a very similar picture. Also, I bet if I could draw a FIB retracement on this, this is one, two, three, four, FOMO five. And then this is A, B, C. So there's this similar structure everywhere, right? When do you buy when it's super scary? That's when. Doesn't get any more scary than the Fed, you know, threatening to pull out $85 billion a month with a horrible inflation number coming. Do you want to take the risk? If I took the risk, it would be in things like ETH and Bitcoin. I know that's not sexy. Now, if you own this and you didn't FOMO in at the top and you want to hold it, our fundamental guys love this. So that, that's what I would tell you about that particular coin, okay? Hello from Finland. Okay, XRP. XRP and Cardano, those are the eternal YouTube questions. So let's check it out. Okay, XRP, nine bottom. So with XRP, if you get a nine top, you sell here, here, here. When you get a nine bottom, right, or a 13 bottom, it's paid to buy. So XRP is in a range between 76 cents and it looks like when it goes to 90 cents, they sell. That, that looks like the range. Maybe you can extend it down to 72 cents, right? But you're trading a range. Now, if you're a huge XRP fan, right? What you want to do is you want to buy it when they give you a great price, which is below 75 cents. So if you want to get more, get it down there. Okay. If you want to narrow the range, it's 75 cents to 90 cents. So it's closer to the lower end of the range. So if you like XRP, not financial advice, and you could tolerate the legal risk, XRP seems to be okay. Again, most altcoins that we look like are on some form of support or close to it. Okay, now Cardano, nine bottom. Let's look at a shorter term chart, even though this video has got to last three days. Okay. Now, one thing that people in Cardano will like, okay, on your 90 minute chart is this whole big move up is a one wave. And then this whole correction here is a two wave, which could mean it could that if Cardano takes off, it could make a very big move. So I know Cardano Nation likes that, right? Two waves in the transition between two and three can be boring, okay? And a dollar is supporting Cardano. So I don't think anybody's going to stop out of Cardano just because it went down. I mean, we knew resistance was at $1.25. We knew that, okay? And we knew it had to get above that in order to go up. But, you know, like I said, if this move in Cardano was either a first part of, of a move, or if this was like a three wave and then an ABC down here, see this little four, that could be a four wave. What does a four wave mean? Well, it means there could be a five wave. So if ETH holds and Bitcoin holds, Cardano could hold. In my mind, you know, bigger is better. All right, now let's switch over to altcoin overtime because I know we talked about Swiss Borg and Maple in the title, and I bet you thought I forgot about it, but I didn't. Okay, spell token. People have been asking me about spell token. Okay, we've noticed that the token metrics grade in blue has exploded up to 80, okay, while spell token hasn't done much. Now we saw this in Zillica and we've seen it before. So spell token is something to keep an eye on. Like, if you're like, all right, well, you know what, Bill, I cannot control myself. I got to get involved in a small altcoin. All right, well, you find a support point or you take a look at something where our grade has spiked, even though the token has done nothing. 
Okay, here's spell uh, on a regular chart. I would say if spell is above 0.0529, then you can start going with what our AI is saying. You want to get, I don't know, at least some confirmation that an up move is beginning. Now, here's a Mo play, Ichi, right? The TM grade went exploded in blue, right? Back in late February, this coin slowly built up and then exploded. And from what it looks like with FIB extension work, you know, I don't recommend FOMO, but if you were holding this, right, 66 is support, right? And a dollar, uh, 112 is resistance. Now let's talk about Swiss Borg. Okay, 50 cents is the key to mark level. If Swiss Borg can take that out, it means the sellers right, are out of gas, and this has formed a rounding bottom. So there's a lot of hope for Swiss Borg if it gets above 50 cents. This could be a case of the bigger the base, the higher in the space. Naturally, naturally, going to want to go back and make sure you watch the first part of the video as to where you want to be stopping out or where the range is in Bitcoin or Ethereum, right? If Bitcoin's above 41.6K, you can hold your long. If Bitcoin's above 44, you can sleep better. 3180 to 3100 in ETH is the key level. If it's above that point or holding at that point, you can sleep at night. Now, Maple, I'm looking at 5161, right? As a level that it's got to get above in order to start an uptrend. Okay. A lot of people are searching for that particular coin. So, as altcoin overtime, those are the small altcoins that, you know, are, are catching our attention. Okay. Darren Harris needs, needs AVAX knowledge. All right. Let's get the AVAX roadmap going. Because I'm not going to lie. What's going on here sucks. <clears throat> sucks. And no, no premonition that this thing was going to go back to 80. Okay, so here's the good news. You got a nine bottom. Okay, I'm not sharing the screen. You got a nine bottom. All right, so let's talk about all the things that are good first. You have A, B, C. That's how you do corrections in Elliott Wave, called a zigzag or A, B, C. Okay, that's good. You have a nine bottom. Enforcing the idea that it could be over. That's good. Now, what would be a lot better is if Avalanche could get back over 89. So you need to be asking yourself, where did you get into this trade? You got into this trade at 75. You want to hold on? Okay. Because 76 is a support point below the market. If you got into this trade at 97, there's resistance there. We covered that earlier. All right. So you want to manage risk accordingly. All right. Now this video has to last two days or three days. So let's look at the daily chart. All right. So in Avalanche, we have one, two, three, four, possibly. So we have good support at 82.52. Right. And if you want to know where your stop should be, that's where it should be below that like 81.90, okay? If you're looking for Avalanche, if it's supported at 82.52, it's got to attack 100 and it can go higher to 125. That's what I was thinking, to be honest. And you've got this warning signal, which again, turned out to be this $20 flush. I think Avalanche can make a new high, okay? So I'm still in buy the dip mode. But I'm not bull tarred mode, right? I got to know where your stop is when you do a trade because nobody wants to get wrecked. Megan wants to know what that is on my hat. That is the logo of the San Antonio Spurs basketball team. So I live here in San Antonio. We have something called Fiesta going on. So we're all sporting our San Antonio pride. Okay, we have... We have polymath again. Wow, we have people who are really pumped up about polymath today. 
Okay, polymath. Security token play. Okay, has good support at 42 cents. So that was a prior high. It shoots up and comes back down. This is convertible into something called polymesh. We have looked into this. I mean, if there is a future for security tokens, not investment advice, it's probably in polymath. They've written their code in, in like the code that is built or used to build Polkadot, as I understand it. So it mooned, it crashed, that happens. You got to remember, Polymath's been around for a long time. So it was at a dollar, and every time it pops its head above 50 cents, it's like an Algorand, right? You got whales selling it, okay? There was a whale who shilled it to us in Austin. I didn't need it to be shilled. I, I know this is good, all right? But you're at a DeMarc 4, so if it's not above 42 cents, do not stick around. Okay, what's FET doing? Okay, so FET hit a bunch of resistance at 54 cents and came off. So this is a theme throughout small coins that you got the rally, you got something up to resistance, and you know you had about two days to take the money. So the good news is an FET support, it's held around 43 cents and it's done that one, two, three times. So if it's above 43 cents, it's good. If it's not, it's not. Okay, dot. Another big boy, let's check that out. Okay, so we talked about polka dot. We got the A, B, C correction and the nine bottom, which is everywhere. But what we also don't have, this is like Solana, right? This is a big coin that made a bottom. That's good. It stopped going lower, but somebody has to show that they're willing to come in and pay higher prices. Generally speaking, you know, minus the Fed, if I didn't know about the Fed thing, okay, maybe that's how I do the rest of the stream. Let's pretend I don't know about the Fed thing. Right, I would say Polkadot is in a 2023 range. So you buy it below 20, you sell it at 23 uh, until further notice. So I don't really have any interest in being short Polkadot at 20. I don't really have any interest in being like negative Avalanche or, or even Ethereum. Like Ethereum at 3,100? Check where Ethereum is for God's sakes. Like I got to get negative Ethereum at 3,100? No, I, I don't think so. I can't do it. Right, 3180 is holding, ETH is holding. Okay, I mean, I know the Fed is on the war path, but I just, <laughs> you know, I, I want you to know where your stop loss is because I know how YouTube is, right? People are pumped up and that's good. We want you to be pumped up. We want you to come and subscribe to our channel. We just don't want you to get wrecked if the Fed goes crazy. If the Fed doesn't go crazy, well, guess what? This is all bunk and ETH's going to go right back up again. Okay, it's right back up again. Okay, wow, they're starting to come in now. Want to welcome everybody who comes into the request session. Um, we're a firm believer that there's nowhere else to go on YouTube to get on-demand TA, okay? And whether that's right or whether it's not, we would appreciate if you come in for on-demand TA that you hit the like button, okay? We have ASTR. Okay, that's in the DeMarc system. So let's check it out. Okay, so there was a volatility warning sign and you certainly got some volatility. Okay, there's a DeMarc point at 24 cents on the four hour chart. This actually, I mean, this is a mixed picture, right? A, B, and maybe there's going to be a C. Right, the last time I, I I I didn't emphasize that there could be a C wave correction. So if it's not above twenty four cents, then you're probably looking at the, the possibility of a correction. Now on the daily chart, obviously, 
Okay, this is, looks different. Okay, it looks like you have a nine top, a counter trend move, and then it's possibly resuming. Okay, this warning sign, all right, is there. But I, I would say you'll know this is good if it dips one more time and everyone buys it, or if there is no dip and you start to get mo after it breaks through 24 cents. But again, notice every time this thing has gotten above 24 cents, it, they sold it. They sold it here, right? In early April, they sold it on the 5th. And now we get to see if the sellers are out of ammo. If they're not out of ammo, there's probably going to be a move to 18 cents before it has a shot of going up. Hopefully that clarifies it for you. Okay. Okay, Megan, bill for president. Thank you. I appreciate that. I would actually take the job. I like talking and making speeches. DYDX. Okay, we can do DYDX and perp at the same time. Okay, so DYDX, everybody FOMOs into crypto and then FOMOs into DYDX. And then it gets crushed like these derivatives exchanges do. It makes a nine bottom and now they're trying to bring it back. I mean, DYDX took off from this level to start with. You know, I have a really hard time being bearish on these decentralized derivatives exchanges. Now, I know DYDX was an airdrop. Realistically, I would want to see DYDX above 562 right? Because this could be like A up, B down, and C up, right? There could be more upside in this thing, but there's no but. There could be more upside, okay? But you want to see it take out resistance, right? You got to hold support, and now resistance does matter. When the Fed's coming in and talk about draining money out of the system, Support matters, and now resistance does too. It does. Okay, perp. No real read on the daily other than that there's support well below the market at 382. That would sort of be awful. Okay, and there's really nothing going on on the four-hour chart except like DYDX. This was a consolidation level around 460. So PERP sometimes is like a momentum instrument, right? Once it gets going in a particular direction, it keeps going, right? Now, this is the 90-minute chart of PERP. This is shown on the screen midday, April 7th. So you had a third, couple 13 bottoms. You had a climactic puke lower, okay? There's support at 439. So is PERP going to moon right this second? Well, I don't know. But, you know, it doesn't pay to buy these things when they're up. And I don't think it pays to sell them when they're down. Like the last time PERP was at this level, let's go back to the four-hour chart. I don't know. It just doesn't pay uh, unless ETH breaks down, right? I mean, I think you have to trade a lot of these coins off of ETH. Like this was a support zone and it took off. Then it comes back down. 455 is the level. So if ETH holds, PERP and DYDX will hold. Okay. Zim Z says big investors bought at 45K. They will sell at 73K and dump the market. Well, we would, we would be only too happy to have that problem. Right. <laughs> okay. Bitcoin's got to get itself above 44K so I can sleep at night again. Okay, curve supported 297, nine bottom on the four hour chart. So, I mean, we're going to decide, the market's going to decide what it wants to do, right? It's going to decide, right? Are, is inflation over? It, has that trade been done in the bond market? Or is the Fed going to let the bond market run wild? Or is the Fed going to talk tough until equities go down? By the way, you know, just as an aside, 
it's been written recently that the only way to stop inflation is to wreck equities. And the New York Fed governor has said, you know, we're just going to let the bond market, you know, go down and have interest rates rise until it wrecks equities. We don't have to wreck equities. We're going to let the bond market wreck equities because that's what's required to slow the economy down. People feel less rich. They can't borrow money. Margin calls get made. So, you know, we're at the mercy of monkey market. Now let's pretend we don't know about that and we don't know about the Fed. Okay. Now, the best way to hedge crypto, I think, is to be short equities right now. Okay. Or do some sort of yield strategy with options, not investment advice, by selling upside calls in stocks. So there are ways to protect your crypto portfolio using equities. That's a sophisticated game. Okay. Curve has got a moving average support at 245 on the daily chart. Okay, on a 90-minute chart, again, this looks okay, right? 13 bottom, 9 bottom, support at 243, looking to go the other way. Would love to see it turn around and go to 273, okay? Zim Z says, I believe the Fed will avoid recession. They will not destroy the market. Man, I hope so. Because if that's true, <laughs> you know, give me some of that 3,200E, <laughs> right? So... Like I, I don't even want to think about stopping out of ETH at 3180. I don't want to think about that. It's like, you got to be kidding me. I, I got to get out of ETH because the central bank can't control inflation. Oh, please. Right. I don't want to do it. Okay. Nine bottom on the 90 minute chart of Ravencoin. Okay. Four hour chart. Okay. Good support around 0.065. So like all these things, you've made a nine bottom. And now the question is, are buyers willing to come in and pay higher prices? Why? Right? Nobody had a pro Nobody, everybody's like crypto people are trained that if it's blood in the streets, it's down 10, 15% buy. It. Okay. That's cool. Right. It's that way in the metaverse too. Right. You, you know, so our momentum charts, our momentum system liked sandbox, right? like two days ago, then Sandbox crashed. There's the nine bottom. And now it's starting to come back. Will Sandbox, will the metaverse come back? Okay. You, you're trained to buy it when it's destroyed. The question is, will you get gratification? Okay. I noticed Vulcan was trying to come up today. Okay. So... When Vulcan goes down, everyone's buying it. When Vulcan goes up, everyone's selling it. There's a nine bottom, but it looks more like people are adjusting their position. Okay. Uh, they're adjusting their positions. Did we do Gala? Uh, no, not yet. Florida is in the house. Welcome. Okay. Again, if you're coming in for requests or you just like altcoin TA, please hit the like button. Okay. So same story. Okay, down nine bottom and then possible up move. All right, we have to make sure that people are willing to pay higher prices now. So here's the third, this is a 90 minute chart of Gala. So people in this have been suffering, right? Now, big picture, right? It has not paid to sell Gala at 23 cents and it has not paid to buy Gala at 27 cents. So if we don't, if we pretend that 30, 32, 3180 is going to hold an ETH and we don't know about the Fed, this looks like the bottom end of the range. Okay. You know, one thing you have to ask yourself though is, you know, all right, I like my coin. Nothing I say is going to stop you from liking your coin. I don't want you to not like your coin. I just want you to ask yourself if something bad happens. Does that mean something bad happens to you? Particularly if you're in the smaller coin space. In other words, we're, we're back to where we were a couple of days ago. Well, if something should go up and it doesn't, or if something gets to support and doesn't go up, 
what's it going to do? It's going to go down. Like I was looking for the God candle in Bitcoin and I didn't get it. And as soon as I realized, oh no, I didn't get it. Boom. The Fed comes out. Okay. Let's look at inverse finance. All right, so this is interesting, right? Stochastics look like they're turning up and there's support at 286. So this could be interesting, right? They bought it up and then they washed it out, A, B, C. So give it a chance. Steve J says, we have no representation. We just have puppets for the central banks. That could be true. Central banks are actually running everything. And you just have to remember that don't fight the Fed. Right? Now, if the Fed chickens out, well, okay, this is going to moon so hard, you're not going to believe it. So there's a 13 and a 9 bottom in Stellar. Let's look at a 4-hour chart. So as with all these things, right, it didn't pay to sell at 21. It didn't pay to buy at 24. So until further notice, that's probably your deal. And then you'll know probably by Sunday night or Monday morning, whether this is actually a nine bottom or if it's a nine and then maybe a counter trend move and then lower. So you'll know over the weekend, you'll know when equities open Monday, particularly if there's you know, a stunt by the Russians over the weekend. They, they took a break from that last weekend and everybody got all euphoric. So you know, just be careful of those guys. Okay. Cake has got resistance at $9 and 16 cents. So, you know, cake mooned, everybody wants to get in on it now. And I don't know that it's ever paid to buy a huge dip in cake. The good news is, the good news is, is that there is some hope on a four hour chart that this was a three wave top. This was a four wave bottom and there could be a new high. So I'm not saying there's no hope in this, particularly since Binance coin looks very similar. Okay. The synthetics army is here. Okay. Like the emotional swings in synthetics will drive you to a doctor. First, it looks like synthetics is going to zero. Then it looks like it's going to 29. Then they brutally wash it out. Okay, so let's get the DeMarc work going on this and let's get some fib retracement work going. Okay, so the good news is synthetics held the 62% retracement of its overall up move at 524. So that's good. So this is an altcoin like Ave, right? Where I was like, you know what? This looks okay. This held support. So if it held support and ETH is okay, that's your formula for the next three days. You got your Bitcoin levels, your ETH levels, your Solana levels, your AVAX levels. Are these big coins holding support? Yes or no? Is my altcoin holding support? Yes or no? And then you make decisions. Could synthetics hit $100? Well, that would sure be nice. Okay. I think if there is a moon target in synthetics on the weekly, it's 23 or more conservatively, 961 for a moving average. Okay. For synthetics to go to a hundred, you'd have to have ETH at 10 K, which I wouldn't mind either. By the way, while we're at it, synthetics holding a big DeMarc point at 546. So, you know, Cody. Okay, Cody held the big moving average at 28 cents. 
but there's a topping signal warning here and it's closing in on a 13 top. So the next big rally in Cody, you want to ask yourself, do I want to stick around or do I want to take some money off the table? Okay. There's resistance around 32 cents. So I'm not hating on this. It held support at 28 cents. That's good. But on the next rally, you have to ask yourself, do I want to take any profits? Yes or no. And if it goes up and you don't take profits and it turns down, what will I do then? Hopefully it just moons. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. But you need to be realistic with the fed on the war path. Okay. Scalp sell target for Cody is probably 32 cents. Okay. Anchor right? There's resistance at 0.086. I'm sorry. 0.086. That's where resistance is. So you have your A, B, C correction, like everywhere else. Okay. Let's look at the daily chart. So decent support at eight cents. Okay. Not the best looking to mark work in the world. Because again, up at 0.094, they were selling it, All right? So it's a balanced picture because it looks like the prior high doesn't give me the exact level. So where anchor is right now near like eight and a half cents, April 7th, midday, okay? question is, will the prior ceilings become the floor? Where does ETH need to be for Solana to hit 1K? I think for all these type of moon targets, right? You have to have the dollar lower. So the way ETH and Solana get to those levels, it, it's not... You don't, you don't use synthetics to try to predict ETH and Solana. What you do is you use the dollar. Okay. So let's go to the dollar chart. So this is DXY. And let's go to like the monthly chart. Okay, so here's the monthly chart of the dollar index. So you can see what this looks like going back a period of years. Now, the dollar index has not been able to get really above 100. It stopped at 100 for like five, six, seven years since 2015. So if the dollar tops, then you'll be okay. Crypto can go up a lot. But if the dollar doesn't top, then stuff like ETH and Solana can't become money. Now, when the dollar does top, like it did back in 2001, like this is the crypto dream, right? This is like the start of a recession, right? In, in 2002, or the, I'm sorry, it was the end of a recession. So the dollar went up and then the Fed, I think, started cutting interest rates and the dollar just fell out of bed. Okay, if the dollar moves like this, that's ETH10K. You can't get ETH10K with all of this noise. You need the dollar lower, period. All right. Back to altcoins. Okay, no read on cult. Okay, so where is support in cult? Support in cult is that you're eliminating the zeros three, two, two, eight. 
So if it's above 3228, it's okay. If it's not, then the easy money has been made. That's how I would do it. Oh, Steve wants me to look at total two, and that's how we'll wrap up the show. So total two weekly. Okay, let's try total two daily. So what's total two? Total two is total crypto market cap without Bitcoin. So support is holding. So this is a common theme. You know, there are a lot of people who think that this whole thing up top, like this whole last 10 days was a big BS false breakout. So total two is telling you the same thing that the ETH chart is. There's support. That's good. You can buy the dip. Sure. But if you don't have a stop with the Fed on the war path, you're asking for trouble. Okay. All right, folks. That's it for today. Okay. That's it for the next three days. So let's sum up what we got. 41,600 Bitcoin support. Below that, out. 44,000 even in Bitcoin. Above that, sleep well. 31,800 support ETH. 31, 30, 3,180 in ETH support. 3,100 in ETH support. Below that, out. Okay. Solana, got to get above 119. It's got it. If you did a bad trade, you did a bad trade. Avalanche, okay? Optimally, you want to see it hold 82. If it doesn't, there's nobody home until 64. Okay? All your altcoins, as of now, have made temporary bottoms. April 7th, midday. The question is, two or three days later, will bulls come in or our fear of an equities debacle going to hurt crypto because monkey market, a.k.a. stocks, get hammered because the Fed wants it to get hammered. So, be pro-crypto. Mind your risk management, okay? And don't fight the Fed. This is Bill Noble for the Market Update. I will see you Monday. Okay.